Thank you for staying with us. The Japa syndrome is what the current youth of Nigeria have been diagnosed with as they continue to flee our motherland for greener pastures in other countries. I really hope I pronounced Japa right. I've been told that I don't get the key. <laughs> Anyways, before diving into this discussion, we must first understand the true meaning of the brain drain. Mm. Now, brain drain is the departure of educated or professional people from one country, economic sector or field for another, mm. usually for better pay or living conditions. So why does this happen? Can we blame the people that permanently leave their countries in hopes of better opportunities mm -hmm. for themselves and their families? And finally, with the rate at which this is happening, will our motherland survive the rapid loss of her best and brightest? Let's talk about it. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663 and follow us on all our social media platforms. What do you think? Oh, wow, yeah. guys. <laughs> See, a lot, especially people our age, um, yeah. in our friendship groups and everything, as soon as, you know, I just see results just came out, A-level results just came yeah. out. Right. If you, we know Nigerians are smart, so obviously our grades are good enough to be able to send your kids abroad. That's yeah. what parents are doing. They're sending their kids abroad for better education, better lifestyle, better everything. So they're sending their kids to the US, to the UK, Canada, guilty. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> just because the education system in Nigeria is not really one that you would want to put your child in in order to become successful. Mm -hmm. yeah. medical, medical students in Nigeria are spending up to 10 years in uni just to come up with a degree and not be able to go anywhere to work. That's crazy. Like, I had a conversation with one of my doctors. Um, we were talking about like, what I wanted to do in the future. I want to become a pulmonologist. And he told me there are only like seven of them in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, seven. S seven people. Seven people. <laughs> seven qualified people in Nigeria that are pulmonologists. All The rest of them have gone abroad. The rest of them have gone to the US, yeah. to the UK. They're aiding those countries, allowing them to have a better healthcare system that instead was, of coming back mm -hmm. to Nigeria and allowing them to, um, what's it called, help people back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really crazy. And so yeah. I'm so sorry to cut you off. Go yeah, on. I wanted to just say something, even before you mentioned mm -hmm. that. Um, the Jack Pass, even I don't get the pain. <laughs> the Jack Pass syndrome that we are like currently experiencing in Nigeria, there's actually a very distinct difference between that and brain drain. Mm -hmm. Because like you rightly said, brain drain is like when the educated individuals migrate, but then Jack Pass does not apply to anybody. Any mm -hmm. shape, mm -hmm. any size, yeah. any form. As long as you can find a way to leave, you go. It's, it's gotten so bad that right now, other countries like the US, UK and Canada, like you said, are even reluctant to give people from Nigeria visas, visas. to go out because, because it's like they'll say, I'm going for a visiting visa, I'm going on holiday. When you now get there, you go off the radar. Hmm. You'll disappear. Nobody can find you again. And it's like, so why should we trust these people that are even trying to come out of their own economic system mm -hmm. when they're just going to come and lie to us? Yes. And everybody is doing it. So it's like you don't even have to have gone to school. As long you as you can find that plug that will get you to where yeah, you want to go, yeah, yeah, gone. And that is what we're going to call Jackpa. Mm. Well, when you talk about Jackpa, do you there's there's such a stark difference though? Yeah. Because mm. even though I go to school in the UK, I won't say that I'm Jackpa. Let me tell you why. Mm. Jackpa, like the word Jackpa means to escape. Mm. I'm not really escaping from anything. I can mm -hmm. come here and I'll find a job. Yeah. A lot of people that are Jackpaing are going to places because. Nigeria doesn't have the opportunities for them. Yeah. True. And since we're, we're so privileged, mm -hmm. then no, not everyone is Jackpa anymore. I think, I think we're m using the term moving with Jackpa. Yeah. Mm. Jackpa exactly. is That's what leave, to escape, don't come back. Don't come yeah, back. Yeah. But then when you look at it from that perspective, because that leans very much towards like your financial situation and your standard of living. True. Regardless of that, would you, do you say that you still be able to thrive in this country, regardless of whether or not you'll be able to come here and find a job? Do you think you'll find a job that would be let's say, intellectually stimulating for you or would actually even properly align with the course that you're doing. For instance, somebody like Ite, um, Ite is privileged, mm. but Ite wants to be a pulmonologist and there aren't a lot of jobs for pulmonologists no, in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. So in a way, everybody that's living is still Japan. Mm. Mm. This piece is going to so Please, just let it slide. Good, good, good. But we're all still Japan because we're all still looking for better opportunities. We're yeah. all trying to escape. Even though we living. may have like better standards of living than others, exactly. we're still escaping because our own like perception of reality can't align with what Nigeria has in store for us. Yeah. So, because uh, you see, um, like let's say for instance, somebody who works in a shopping mall or like a grocery store. Yeah. yeah. Minimum wage outside of this country, if you're earning minimum wage in Canada, that's like $12, $15 per hour. Right. But 
if you convert that to um naira that's i want to say like 15k no no that's crazy actually <laughs> like 10k or something per hour yeah. but if you come to nigeria the minimum wage in nigeria that that's thirty thousand naira per, per month, month. Mm. Per month. <laughs> mm. what 30k can't feed anyone in this economy right now because four prices well, are going up you, groceries are going <laughs> up <laughs> and inflation rate is so high that's crazy like you have 30k, but that 30k can buy you two lollipops. Eh? Exactly. And, and that's uh, it. Uh, that's it. <laughs> and a bottle of coke. <laughs> it's, it's so easy to be like, stay here, stay in your country, make a difference, which yeah. we should do. But then we must also understand that people are just trying to make it through. They're trying to not even just do the best for themselves. Parents are gathering the all their funds to send their children abroad just mm -hmm. so at least their children can get even a mediocre job and be sending them some money so they can still try and thrive in this country. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, on, uh, I can't even remember what day it was. I think it was last week. Mm -hmm. I, actually, both of us, we went to with my mom to go and interview yeah. a very controversial and <laughs> interesting man. His name is Dele Faro to me. Mm -hmm. And then it was essentially about, um, the topic was renewed hope versus our current reality or something like mm. that. And he tried to specialize the um, trajectory of the topic towards what we're talking about, yeah. which is the brain drain. And then when he was explaining it, I was so moved because this guy is very... So much passion. So yeah. much passion so against much. people leaving this place. Yeah. But then when you think he's like, we should stay and, and we should fight. But then if you're going to fight knowing full well that you're losing everything in that fight, how can you do that? Yeah, with, the with that same mind. level of passion. For exactly. David to me, I don't mean to um, put in point fingers or anyone, but then... If you look at him, he's a very well-educated man, mm. and then his standards of living are very high. If Nigeria were to go through the worst economic depression it has ever seen since 1960, mm -hmm. he will That's still effective. be okay. It's not everybody that can go through that. Exactly. So when he's telling the rest of us, right, particularly those who aren't even as privileged as us that are sitting down here yeah. to stay and fight, fight for what? Well, and how will you even fight? What are you what using are you to fight? You using <laughs> to so fight? So, no, because even with the discussion of um, the definition of the brain drain mm -hmm. um, that I said, it's talking about people that are educated, you know, coming to benefit yes. the economy. Do yes. you know how much potential we have in Nigeria? Do we you know how many geniuses are here that they, do, they haven't been able to enter a classroom and learn how to hone that? Yeah. When they go to these schools abroad and they're able to get more actually opportunities, do actually, they want you know, to do. rags to riches straight up, where are you seeing that in Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> it's like an artist having talent without a paintbrush exactly. and a canvas. So like, okay. you ha we have so much potential as Nigerians. Yeah. Everywhere you go, everyone's like, oh my gosh, are you a Nigerian? Oh, I hear Nigerians are so Very smart. smart. Yeah. Like, I go out of the country and I'm so proud to be a Nigerian. Yeah. Then I come back home and i'm and like, like uh. <laughs> have you ever exactly. if you've asked me what i'm going to like study what i plan to study in the future mm -hmm. i'll tell you in one one word mechatronics and every time i say that to someone who's asking me a nigerian mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> i now have to like explain myself i'm like okay mechatronics is this combination of mechanical engineering and robotics and mm. design systems and control systems and uh, computer science and whatever and then i have to explain how it's applied and how you can use it but the reason why they don't even get it in the first place is because it doesn't even exist, exist in, in nigeria. nigeria so if you want to okay i have been doing math and physics since as for as long as i can remember mm -hmm. and this is the thing i've dedicated my passion towards this is what i want to do with mm -hmm. my career if I can't do that in Nigeria, then aren't I just like wasting the talents that mm, I've been given? Exactly. So, how do you not expect me to stay when I know that I could go and do what I need and want to do somewhere else? Exactly. Mm, yeah. The youth are our future, but then. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, about that, a lot of Nigerians were underemployed or were unemployed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have the skills, underemployed, we're in jobs that we, we could work more hours, mm -hmm. we could make more money, we could yeah. make more profit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we just can't do them. Because as you said, there's no sector for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like for example, I want to get into computer science and econ. Yeah. But that sector is not that big. <laughs> computer in not in yeah. Nigeria. No, not in Nigeria. Yeah. So well, a lot of us are just underemployed. We don't have the resources to get into Mm -hmm. the thing, like the things that we want. Really yeah, awesome. definitely. Because, yeah. like, you see, okay, fine, I'm going out of Nigeria to get a better education. Yeah. Why can't I get that education in Nigeria? In, that's, that's the question they were asking. At the time, like, my grandma loves to say this. She's just like, did you know, um, what's it called? Um, people from the West, they used to come to the University of Ibado. In like, good old everyone, day. yeah, everyone yeah. used to yeah. 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 everything. Why, why can't we boast about that now? Because right? things have exactly. changed. The circumstances are different now. The thing is, we have, like, there is no um, 
maintenance culture when it comes to like Nigeria Definitely. because everything is so predominantly based off that survival mindset. So if it's not happening now, then it's irrelevant. Exactly. So the, we don't think ahead when we're building things. All of those universities that are talking about the mm -hmm. UI, the Uniben, the Unilag even, yeah. it was those days that they were really winning, but then they didn't keep on sustaining that because exactly. for them, they had no incentive. At that particular point in time, they were enjoying their glory for being one of the most recognized universities in the world. But where are they now? And mm. you can tell that the education was not truly valued. If we valued education in Nigeria, then... Like everybody in Nigeria would at least have free primary education. Yes. You because you would see that that's what the children need. Mm -hmm. You that like I was saying before, the children are our future until it's time for you to give them the resources to actually let them make a change. Yes. <laughs> you are letting you're like you are the future. You are the change. Gen Z, stand up and do what? <laughs> <laughs> and do what? Like, what, do what, do what, I, what should I do? I'm like, doing it all. Going like, back to what um, Alpha was saying about maintenance, there was somebody that was just like, I just love Nigeria. Like, if I could live here, I would live here. But the only issue is, is our maintenance culture. Yeah. A rich man would build a three-story house, seven bed, mm. eight bath, <laughs> you know, um, movie theater in, in the house, kitchen bigger than Outside, my whole bath, house. Do you get? <laughs> and the moment, like, let's say an AC breaks, Oh, I'll fix that later. Mm. Your light bulbs are fl um, flashing. Yeah. Um, I'll fix that later. Um, what's it called? But you still have the money to buy a two million naira um, TV because that's what everybody is coming into your house to see. So mm. now, give, let me picture this. Let's say it wasn't a house. Let's say it was a hospital, mm. right? And in this hospital, one surgical needle gets missing. We'll buy another Just one. one. <laughs> Um, there are no stethoscopes that can actually do what they're supposed to We'll nice, get to okay, later. Nice, the MRI scanner <laughs> isn't even working anymore. It's not don't even worry, we don't need it here. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to it later. How do you not expect doctors who have spent 10 good years of their life trying to learn how to use these things? Expect, how do you expect them to stay there when they know that they have worked to get the qualifications that they have exactly. received to still come and receive the same kind of like um, situation or circumstances to work with like mm. how do you want them to still thrive in those circumstances yeah. why wouldn't they leave exactly so, so it's, it's, it's yeah, layers it's, it's looking beyond just oh i just want to escape i just want to go and live life do uk gangster do UK. <laughs> it's not that it's thinking that i want my talent to be i want to make a change to i want to make relevant. it different I, it, like you know and sometimes you need to think about the people that you're providing for back in your country yeah. Yeah. and do you know what's funny this thing about the brain dream, my mom is always saying this. Nigerians, right? All we ask for is the barest minimum. Mm -hmm. As well, we don't we don't need that two million naira. Although some guys do, do want yeah. it to flash around and everything, but we don't need that. All we need is good lights, good water, housing, and good food. Once we have that, everything else is sorted. All the people that have migrated to the countries, UK, US, Canada. It's not all of them that are millionaires in those countries. Yeah. They're like average people, but they're still loving and enjoying their lives. Yeah. Because they have the basic infrastructure to just sort themselves out. Mm -hmm. And that's what Nigeria lacks. So if the circumstances were different and we did have those, then maybe people won't be leaving as much as they are right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. About leaving, like even because we don't have a lot of security in Nigeria, mm -hmm. a lot of people feel unsafe in Nigeria. Yeah. Like, Definitely. Uh, kidnappings recently on trains and all mm -hmm. that. Like, it's such a, a, almost an epidemic. People, people are barely taking public transport as much as they did before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of people are migrating to places that they feel are safer. Safer. Yeah. Of course, like for example, in the in Europe, three million Nigerians are like enrolled to, in in schools. In school. Hmm. There's, yeah. there's like three million, three million. that could come back and like make our economy so much better. Yeah. 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 And like if you see, okay, so we're talking about brain drain. It's our intellectual, our smart, our educated people leaving the country. Yeah. Yeah. What does that leave us with? <laughs> Seventy-six million people in Nigeria are illiterate. So is it those 76 million people that we're going to expect to make the country a better place? Mm. The ones that are left behind, let's do something for them at least. Because mm. now we know, okay, those ones that have gone, they've gone. We can't do anything about it right now. Yeah. So in order to make them at least have something to do, government needs to provide education. They mm. need to provide a good healthcare system. Mm. They need to provide, um, what's it called, just better lifestyle, better living. Why is it that a lot of people on the streets, like you were saying the other day, that you were walking along the streets and people were hawking, people were begging, mm. do you get? Mm. Why? I see the same yeah. man along that freedom way, <laughs> asking for money, the same one. If you are just tuned in, we are discussing the brain drain syndrome in Nigeria. Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation by sending us an SMS 
or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. And because it's a special, the phone line is going to be open all week. So you can call us on 070-250-07749. If you call, please remember to turn down the volume of the device so we don't get any feedback. Now, <laughs> we're going to start off with a comment. It says, on the topic of immigration, can we talk about the use of fake marriages to get permanent residencies abroad? Oh, Green hashtag, cards. are we desperate? Uh, I thought I had made this clear. Nigeria is a very creative people. No, it's, it's really interesting. <laughs> we would, like, there, if you find a way, you will find a way. Like, yeah, there, there are so many different tactics that these people, that mm -hmm. we have used mm -hmm. to just escape our own reality here. Yeah, mm -hmm. So I'm not even surprised. Man. Fake marriages. <laughs> Fake marriages. Oh. No, but you guys, do you think that like this is also influenced by just the general lack of patriotism? Like, do Nigerians mm. even like Nigeria at all? <laughs> no, they do. Like, I, I th yeah, I think they do. Like, let's take Naramali. Naramali made that song, Jaffa. That, Jaffa, that song, twenty eighteen. <laughs> yeah. week, like, a few weeks before he made it, he made it's a go because of the World Cup. He, he, he was very patriotic. Yeah. No, but patriotism isn't just celebrating the wins of your country; it's defending your country mm -hmm. and want, and like also being conscious of how you portray your country. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are so loud about our problems. We are. Like, but we're also proud, of, like, proud and loud about our good things. Like, our That's the thing, but you need to be there in the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? I get yeah. You can't, like, do you, as a Nigerian, it's not every day that you wake up and, like, you're saying, and your prayer is, ah, I hate this country. Do you know how many people my age I've heard say I'm going to go and burn my passports? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Definitely. Like, like, well, because you see, yeah, um, yeah, during the people. World Cup, the FA um, Women's Cup, World Cup, a lot of Nigerians, especially in the diaspora, oh, go um, super far gone. Yeah. Like, Nigeria's my country, Nigeria's my country. When the full prices are going down, when, like the all, when the dollar is 9.50. I'm not Nigerian. Um, my passport is blue. Yeah. My I'm, passport I'm, I'm, is I'm actually red. like quarter Polish, yeah. quarter American. Like, I, I agree with you. Stay in the good and the bad. Exactly. Like, I'm very much guilty of doing that. But it's something <laughs> that you have to just think about you and be like, you know it. what? This is my country, this is my ethnicity, this is my nationality. Like, exactly. Yeah. And it's something that reflects even in our leaders as well. Mm -hmm. When you see patriotic leaders, they're not going to come and start doing things that are going to damage their country and damage the citizens of their country. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I don't want to compare us to the United States, but listen, these people, they're very intense leaders, but you can tell that they love America. Mm. Americans love America. <laughs> they love it so much that they make their business a business all the time. Yeah. So the Nigerian, the Nigerian leaders, I don't see the love there. I mm. don't see the my country, our mm. country, my people, our people. Mm. It's not just when you're coming and celebrating the different tribes. Oh my God, this culture is so beautiful when they do this. Mm. You have to be in there, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like those, um, there was a point where South Africans just did not want to leave South Africa mm. because they had great infrastructure, great education, great roads, mm. great government, great everything. Yeah. That they were just like, what's the point of going to another mm. country when I have everything I have mm. in my country? Mm. That's why I want to say their economy is like one of the best in Africa because they all decided to stay. They all decided to make South Africa what they wanted it to be. Yeah. Well, now we can't really speak the same, <laughs> but we, I really want Nigeria to reach a point where no one is saying that, oh, I want to leave. I want to do this. Like Everyone is like, oh, I want to come back. I want to come back. I want to come back because yeah. of the opportunities present in Nigeria. It seems that people only want to come back when it's December. Oh, definitely. Yeah. When, <laughs> when there's things to do, when you can post, it's cold in the UK, yeah. it's cold in the US, oh come back to hot Nigeria <laughs> for on vacation. Go for the concerts, yeah. everything. Mm. Like, it's, it's, it's just not good at all. It's honestly just 100% ridiculous. And if you look at it again, I remember when I was, even let's, I'm, not, I'm not going to completely digress from Nigeria, but let's yeah. even look at it as Africa in general. We're going to come uh, back to Nigeria, but Africa in general. Yeah. I go to the African Leadership Academy, right? This is a very short story. <laughs> in my school, I thought I was going to the UK because everybody was going to the UK. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be a UK buddy, you know, mm. going to the UK, everything, my proper jacket. And all my friends were going there. So that was the thing. You go to DWC, after you go to DWC, you, you go to the UK, to America, UK, whatever. Then my dad broke the news to me. He's like, yeah, um, you're applying to ALE. And I was like, yeah, I'll apply to ALE. Let me apply to my other schools as well. I got into ALE. My dad said, ah, thank God. We can't withdraw the application from all the other <laughs> schools now. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to ALE. I started doing my research. I was excited. When I tell you I was clowned, <laughs> I was clowned just because I was staying in Africa. And I was actually feeling, but I, I, like, 
I'm so ashamed to say this now, but I remember like talking to my friends and like hiding my face and like, oh, where are you going to school? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to school in South Africa. And I'm like covering my face. Like, that's so, and, like so many Nigerian teens and mm. Nigerian youth uh, feel so like that. This, mm. yeah. Even if you're going to um, um, A levels or university in Nigeria, you're like, oh, I'm going to university in Nigeria, but don't worry, I'm doing my master's abroad. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's like, yeah. 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 Lots of them, they're like, oh, I'm yeah, guys. for my visa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but can we go back mm. to that visa issue? Uh. I know we want to leave the country, but guys, <laughs> guys, why are we waiting one, two years for a visa to go to a place that doesn't even want you? They're doing us dirty and we're taking it. <laughs> we're taking it. We're sitting down and we're begging, we're like, please release my visa. <laughs> and they don't want us. They're they holding break. someone's passport for six months to a year. You're not even allowed to go <laughs> anywhere. You're <laughs> stranded in a country. Guys. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I feel like the impact on of this entire brain drain on the economy is like so, so deep. Because mm -hmm. the reason why these people are even trying to keep us in our own country, think about it like this, maybe they see it from our mm -hmm. own point of view. Imagine, let's say these guys just don't want us to leave because they're like, okay, who is not going to stay and help you guys fix your own problems? Mm. <laughs> so it's maybe in a way they're trying to help us, to help ourselves, but then we don't we want don't to see want it to. because the situation is just too too messed up for mm -hmm. us to even think of trying in the first place. Mm. Yeah. It, it's 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 really it's saddening sometimes yeah. because, but then you also see people getting rejected um, from visa applications because they're like, oh, we don't see proof of you returning back to your home country. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's the only reason I'm going. Why am I going to Canada to go and enjoy the cold? Nigerians don't like cold. What sure. are we going? No, what yeah. are we going there to do? I'm we not going there to enjoy. It. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> I'm not going there to enjoy right, the cold. So I have a comment, and then it says, "Good evening." On the topic of immigration, it will also help if people who have jackpot could at least share their knowledge or information to improve our home country, Nigeria. That's mm -hmm. one. Two, because most people oh, keep leaving. I'm so sorry to interrupt you right now, but we're having a phone call. A phone call? Yeah, hello? Right. Um, hello, this is Tomiwa. Hi, Tomiwa. Hello. Um, I am calling from Lagos. Um, first of all, I wanted to say you guys are doing really well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I have really been enjoying what I've been watching. Yeah. And on the topic of, you know, Immigration. I think it will also really help if Nigerians abroad could like find a way to support like Nigerians in Nigeria. Yeah. So it really does come down to what I'm talking about education, because courses do tend to get like more, you know, advanced and different. And it's like you don't really find some certain courses in Nigeria. Like Adora said, you don't really find like computer science or economics, mm -hmm. you know, in Nigeria. And it would really help if like they could at least find a way to, you know, share the knowledge that they have on yeah. some of those things. Because those who do have those, that knowledge in particular, they do tend to make what they offer quite expensive, which is not really, you know, yeah. ideal or, like, easy. And it's like, overall, it's just better off going abroad to mm. learn because this is going to be, like, just as expensive in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, that leads me to my second point in terms of, like, even... Us as international students, you know, the fees are, they're not, they're not being, like, <laughs> you see, they intentionally inflate the prices of the international school fees for students because they know that, like, students use, you know, school and things like that to escape from their country, basically places like Nigeria, India, Pakistan, yeah. like, they use, you know, and, like, they profit basically from all these countries because they are citizens are just using like using it as a way to like escape their things. Yeah. Um I think in terms of comparing Nigeria to you know the England or like the US, I think to be fair, Nigeria is like still it's still quite young to the US or even England. Like so I feel like Nigeria does have a really long way to go. Yeah. But um, you know Whatever will happen, happen. I believe like, that generation, the generation that will turn it around. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, that's really all the points I have to make. So yeah. thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. It was yeah. something that she said that really like stuck to me or mm -hmm. stuck with me rather. She said that Nigeria is relatively young. 
I agree with that. Mm. But in the problem of being young and letting that be our own excuse for inefficiency at this point in time is the fact that the world is moving faster than it had ever moved before. Mm. Mm. So it's like everybody just leaving us behind. If you go and check what they're doing in terms of technology in Japan mm. or in the US, in Silicon Valley, you will just be like, do those <laughs> are we dumb? Like it's sometimes when you see where everyone else is going, there is this in it want to have what they have. Yeah. And I guess that's the major reason, apart from even the more opportunities and lack of infrastructure that most people are migrating out of the country. Mm. All right, before you guys can talk, I want to <laughs> sorry, I want to take the next comment I was supposed to take before. It says because most people keep leaving because of limited information, mm. maybe on something they want to study. This is exactly what um, I and Adora were yeah. saying mm. about me, Mechatronics, and her computer science. Because mm. there truly is limited information. Like, Nigeria is no Silicon Valley, and we all know that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to actually get a quality education after how much your parents have paid, mm. you won't be looking for it here. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know, I was having a conversation with my dad last night, and he was talking about something called the solution-driven mindset, right? Yeah. So when you are in a country filled with problems mm. such as this beautiful country that we are in <laughs> you can choose to see those problems as, as opportunities yeah. Yeah. so if everybody is looking at okay for instance we have problems with infrastructure look look at an innovative way to solve it don't try like the main problem with going abroad to try and you know have a higher standard of living is that you're just getting directly into the system you're falling into a mm -hmm. 95 you're living in monotony for like the rest of your life okay. you come to nigeria you solve a problem you leave a legacy you play a because there are so many problems, <laughs> so, many problems. <laughs> so yeah. and the thing is that so, like i'm like i cannot talk because i have had like i've been privileged enough to have standard good ed good quality education right mm -hmm. yeah. but like i said before nigerians are so so naturally intelligent like mm -hmm. even Definitely. my mom told me about this guy that she, in her secondary school that could probably see like answer just flash in front of him <laughs> like when they ask him any math question it just appears yeah. mm -hmm. like these are people that can solve our problems and yeah. they will get rewarded for it mm -hmm. and so will our country will grow yeah. i think what we're really saying is in order to stop or try and hinder brain drain we need to educate the people left over mm. so then that becomes a question of now how are we now going to enable them to get a better education yeah. there are a lot of non-profits that are um, having this initiative to educate the young minds and everything like that. I remember we we oh, had one. Sure yeah. Yes. Yeah. But then there are not enough people trying to support that idea because people are now like, because Nigerians always have that mentality that, uh, that other Nigerians can possibly succeed without having a little bit of fraud here and a yeah. little bit of um, dishonesty here. Yeah. So no one's really... Um, supporting these organizations. Yeah. So I feel like if we really, truly find an organization to support, because I, I won't lie, it's not really looking like our government has that as a priority. Yeah. So if we ourselves can take the, take up the mantle and say, okay, we're going to fix this, then I think we can. it can be possible. It can be done. I yeah. agree with you. And there's this um, thing, like as I was saying before, Nigerians are very, because of the survival mindset, we are very, very like, I want this now. I want this to happen now. This should happen today. It should happen yesterday. So because of that, we won't be able to actually see that solution fully manifest because after the first two or three months, and we see that, okay, not everybody in Nigeria is automatically educated, mm -hmm. we stop. And that's the problem. There's this thing, right, that I was mm -hmm. reading on. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And then it's oh, essentially, <laughs> it's essentially <laughs> explains the progress of someone's mastery in any certain skill at any point in time. In this mm -hmm. case, education of the Nigerian youth to combat mm -hmm. brain drain. So you start at this. This is high, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like you know everything or you think you know everything. You started well. And then all of a sudden you realize that you are a small fish in a very, very big ocean, which mm -hmm. is what we are right now. We're seeing the entire world revolving around us light years ahead of what we have technology-wise. Mm -hmm. So we all of a sudden plunge into this depression and then if you don't continue, you have I'm to so keep... I'm so sorry to cut you off. Oh, my God. But we have another caller. <laughs> Hold on to that because I right. really like where you're going. Do All not right. forget. Yeah. Lola De, hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, you guys are doing amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So um, I have two points to say. All right. 
starting from, I think the problem of Nigeria actually stems from Nigerians. And these are like my two points going in. The first one is, I feel like Nigerians misbehave out of the country. But when they come, sorry, Nigerians behave out of the country. But when they come back into Nigeria, they can mess around. They can drive around without their driver's license. Yeah. They can um, talk anyhow to the police. Okay, the police one. We all know we went through a lot. But, and then second thing I also have to say, the 30 December. I think 30 December actually caused the design of this country. In the sense that um, when everyone comes to December and they come and party and go to all these clubs, yeah. then they leave. <laughs> and the world dry again. The traffic has gone. Yeah. And it is now, I just know that December this year, it's supposed to be walking into the concert because we can't Uber anymore. Uber prices are up. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. The basis of my thing is Nigeria, we also us to, we have to work internally the of this country. Mm-hmm. It is everyone. Bye. 100%. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. No, I 100% agree. We'll expand on that, but I'll finish what you were saying. Yeah. Okay. So, as I was saying, this is where we were. Mm-hmm. And right now, this is where we are, like, in a state of depression. Mm-hmm. And because we don't have the patience to let this thing take its course, mm-hmm. we have stopped. Right? We are still developing, but then for us to actually get to where it's a slow climb. Right? If you check the graph, it literally looks like this. <laughs> and now that we're falling, we think that it's the end, but it's, it's really not. If we kept on pushing for ourselves to be more educated and kept on supporting these organizations that yeah. you're talking about, eventually we'll keep on climbing. Mm-hmm. And then when you finally reach that top again, you'll have true mastery. And that's, mm-hmm. yeah. In that time, we'll be actually self-sufficient and be able to combat our own problems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. like Lola Day was saying, she was saying something about us misbehaving when we're back in the country, but mm. behaving ourselves outside. Yeah. It's like, um, you know that your, fa- your favorite teacher that doesn't really give you any punishments mm. or anything like that. So you feel like, oh, okay, like I can just say whatever I want to say. I can just do whatever I want to do. And then yeah. when the strict teacher comes in and you're like all like um, <laughs> back straight and everything like that. So I think that's, it's very much a thing of, we're too comfortable in our own country that, like you're saying, um, we're at a standstill. Like, yes. we're just like, okay, I don't care. Yeah. But if you're in another country, they're like, oh, okay, these people look like they have a better lifestyle, a better living. And so let me have let structure. Me, uh, exactly. That's strict, accountability system. That strict teacher will always punish you when you mess up. You know, you exactly. can't escape once yes. you do something. So you won't try to even, even do it I'm in the first place. When you're in the UK, the US, where, where, wherever you are, you have there's more risk. Exactly. Mm. Imagine getting a phone call to your parents saying that you're going. Ah. Uh, that, uh, oh my gosh. That you have to go home. You're coming back to Nigeria. Exactly. There's more. There's more freedom in Nigeria because we know this is our home. Exactly. Yeah. We know that the last last they cannot take our passports. Even if it's not even this is our home, they just don't take anything seriously. I remember yeah, today. We don't have just for this yeah. afternoon. Yeah. I was crossing the road, right? Like it was like every cars were just zooming. I was with my parents, and then we're trying to take the zebra crossing, and then the cars are just going pa pa pa. And my dad, and then like my dad now makes this joke about how in Nigeria they don't even care about the zebra crossing. My mom would say if someone hits you and you say the zebra crossing, they say are you a zebra? <laughs> <laughs> but then if you go like abroad, if you go to the UK, that's like your life, you're done. Yeah. You're going straight to jail. That's like we just respect other exactly. people's rules so much that we forget no, about we forget respecting ourselves. Our exactly. Like. If we all came back to Nigeria with that sort of mindset, but then again, our um, authority, they're not doing any repercussions to anybody. Mm. The moment you just pay somebody 1,000 naira on the road, they're letting you go for having either a broken yeah, break light or anything. Up their standards. If, yes, they, if you pay them 1,000, you look, ah, am I? Am I <laughs> <laughs> ah, come on, I'm more than like, that now. You see things that like, people are going to jail for having a broken brake light. Yeah. Have you seen our marwas on the road? I'm so sorry to cut you short. Um, Hello? Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Kennedy. I'm calling from Port Harcourt. Hi, Hi Kennedy. Kennedy. Good evening, Kennedy. Good yeah. evening. Um, my contribution on the topic of the 90s, um, you know, we, someone just uh, called now and talked about how Nigerians behave mm-hmm. when they are abroad and the way they also behave when they are in Nigeria. I think I'm right. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. With you, yeah. we can. Hello? Hello? I'm saying that eh, yes. when it comes to uh, the effort to, to stop the brain drain in Nigeria, I think I want to blame the government. I want the government to be more um, 
uh, ready to come forward with their duties. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, because we go outside there and we have this law that the people obey, and failure to obey the law, you are arrested or you are banned or all those things. Yeah. If you don't do that in Nigeria, people will continue to jack back to the countries where those things work. Yeah. The truth is we are all human beings. Yeah. We like things to be done well. But in Nigeria, we don't seem to do anything well here. Yeah. So you, you continue to see people leaving this country until the government decides to say, okay, we are going to start enforcing our laws. Yeah. It's nothing more than that. There is no Nigerian that wants to leave Nigeria. Our weather is the best. We prefer to eat our food. <laughs> we like yeah. our way of life. Yeah. The people you see leave Nigeria doesn't really enjoy their stay outside the country. Yeah. But they don't have any choice. Yeah, no because choice. there, the law is yeah. being obeyed. They yeah. think they can make um, a good living over there. So all the government needs to do is enforce our laws. And you see people stay back here and enjoy their lives. Mm -hmm. We should stop talking about people just, uh, nobody should go up. They must go, when you have a country where the uh, security is on the rise, the roads are not good for you. You buy your car, you can struggle to buy a car, yeah. but there is no good road to ride your car on. Yeah. You want to leave. Mm -hmm. That's your thing. Definitely. So thank you. That's thank my you contribution. So thank you. Good night, thank everyone. You so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, <sighs> I I blame the government. I blame the upper class people that can help but aren't helping. I blame, <laughs> I blame everybody. But the, yeah, we can't make it a blame game. Yeah. It's sincerely speaking. So if we're going to think about this um, problem from a more solution-driven perspective, yeah, I think, like it's uh, probably mentioned before, we need to actually involve the diaspora in solving this. Mm -hmm. All of those are friends that we know that are outside the different countries. Mm -hmm. We need to start to engage them to come uh, well, back and try to actually mm -hmm. help us to bring ourselves out of this mess. Yeah, you were going to say something. We just got a comment mm -hmm. from Ibrahim Ajo. It says, I know this doesn't directly relate, but like if you notice, even after Nigerians flee outside the country, we still stay connected and show ourselves support. Yeah. Like during NSARS, mm -hmm. here, here Nigerians in France, the UK, and some other countries were protesting abroad mm -hmm. to show their support. Because even if we don't directly show our love for the country, we soon wouldn't want it to fail. Mm -hmm. True. And the respect we have for one another is un unrivaled abroad. Because like if you meet a fellow Nigerian abroad, automatically you're friends. Your friends, yeah. Mm -hmm. and always one of the major topics of the problems that mm -hmm. are problems. I am so so sorry, but we have a caller. Hello. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're filled today. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Yeah, this is Lawman from Abia State. Uh, uh, I know this guy. <laughs> this <is> my <laughs> beautiful sisters. I thank you all because listening to you people, young ones, uh, uh, trying to let us know why people go out, why things that make people to go out, it mm -hmm. makes me happy. That yeah. our youth have started realizing the reason why we have brain drain in this country. Yeah. Yeah. See, I just want to leave one word for you people. If the youth, the middle age, the older ones will come together and form an alliance and we start and say, so far, this, this present politician, so far you are gone. Go no more further in making people to leave this country. Yeah. We stand our ground. We make sure that the judiciary give us good judgment. The electoral empire, make sure the right person that won the election, you give it to that person. Yeah. When we come together and start demanding for that, there will be no more grand dream. Mm. People will love staying in Nigeria. Yeah. Things will move further. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank Sorry, you I wanted to say something. Yeah. Uh, I think it was when Kai called that he said he blames the government. Mm. Now, in Nigeria, all of us know we operate um, a democracy. My thing is, I don't think we do operate a oh, democracy. Mm. Uh, quoting Abraham Lincoln, it's a government for the people by the people of the people. Oh, but then we are the people. So it's like if we don't 
actually involve ourselves in this so-called government that we're putting the blame on and there is no way that we're going to be able to stop all of these things that are causing people to move in the mm -hmm. first place. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, if you just don't choose to bribe the policeman and you get arrested, if one person does it today, 5,000 people do it tomorrow, 500,000 people do it the next day, automatically they will have to stop because they know that it's not getting them anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a while, but then if we started working together, like Loman was saying, as mm -hmm. people, not as a so-called arbitrary government that we don't have any direct connection with, yeah. Yeah. then we'll actually be able to get somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, one last comment. This one's rather long. Good evening, my unique Gen Zs. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> On the issue of growing the rice we eat by ourselves, it has been in operation since around 2016 when the border was closed to discourage imported ones, but how many Nigerians are buying it? Mm. They prefer to buy the rebagged, expired, imported ones. Sure. On, on the celebration of Thrift Shop Day, to me, it is a scam in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> you that I have tried to patronize will be giving you a discount of something like 10,000. Thank you. Is that a discount? On the issue of... On the issue of brain drain, I believe until there's law compelling our leaders in particular to use government schools, hospitals, locally made food and clothing, etc., mm -hmm. there won't be improvement in our country and hence increase in Japa for greener pastures. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed with all your contribution. Please keep, keep it up. Thank Mr. Adeniji from Aja. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. On the topic of just what you said about the brain drain, I just wanted to say something really quickly, just um, in a solution-driven perspective. Yeah. I think technology yeah. is like... A, perfect solution to all of this all and right. investing in that would be able to solve this in a lot of rural areas urban areas everywhere right so it would just ways in which you can create autodidactic leaders okay. people that can take control of their own learning and hone their own talents for instance you're great at physics engineering this is our woman in stem mm. she's our med girl and i write i make music let's be <laughs> on spotify thank you very much <laughs> and so before we go do ensure you follow us on Instagram and Spotify at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. It's time to end the brain drain and move to brain game. It's time for great minds of Nigeria to return home. Deji Olokotsun. You won't be seeing me again tomorrow. Well, until further notice, but thank you for making history with us this week. It's a wrap. Thank you, guys. <laughs>